Okay, so welcome to the um, UNCG Libraries uh, Online Learning and Innovation Webinar Series. Uh, this has uh, been going on now for a couple of semesters. So in this series, different UNCG instructional technology consultants, ITS staff, faculty and librarians will cover topics on online learning pedagogies, UNCG instructional technology tools, Canvas, Google Box, et cetera, and more. These are 30-minute webinars and they're recorded uh, for people who cannot attend. So this page will also contain other applicable links and presentation materials when applicable. Um, I'm going to drop this page of where they will live in the chat and you'll get it again in an email following up this. So I muted you um, for the session and I'll unmute you at the end if you want to ask questions. Um, you are welcome to also ask questions in the chat and I'll monitor them. I'm going to be um, the host and covering, you know, issues as well. So here is my email address and um, phone number, but we'll just try to put the technical issues in the chat so I can try to help. It's kind of, you know, a, um, you know, uh, it's just me here. So I see that someone else entered, so let me try to get them connected to audio. So connect to audio at the bottom of your screen. I'm trying to do that. I'll leave my camera on for a little bit. Um, so I am going to um, slowly get started. Turn my video off. So, um, and I think Trina, you see the chat, but you just need to connect to audio to hear me. Okay, so um, this is on UNCG Libraries tutorials and guides, particularly online um, for um, everyone on research. So I am Sam Harlow, I'm the online learning librarian. Um, I'm also the kinesiology and public health education librarian because um, we have a liaison structure, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And you can find me at this email address, which I dropped in the chat. Um, and we're going to move on. So teaching face-to-face -face and online comes with many challenges, but we are here to help you with that. And that includes making online tutorials and guides. So we are um, in the department of ROI, Research, Outreach, and Instruction. And um, we can... Um, uh, we have a team of people that are for every department at UNCG. So if you want to put your departments in the chat, um, or you can tell me at the end, I'll definitely make sure you know who your liaison is if you haven't already met them. Um, like I said, I'm the liaison to public health education and kinesiology. I also work with fully online programs such as BLS, BIPS. Um, I work with the KIN EDD department because I'm the kinesiology librarian, um, but they're also a fully online uh, EDD program. But um, other of the liaisons work with face-to-face um, -face and online courses. So this is our team. We, you know, we have an education librarian, Amy. We have our you know, English librarian and media studies librarian, Jenny Dale. We have history, uh, sociology, and more, Linda, and so on and so on. So again, make sure that at the end you ask me who your liaison is if you don't already know so that we can work that out. Uh, we do have some new librarians that have joined us uh, in January. Uh, Joe Klein is now the, uh, she's the data viz and GIS librarian, but they are also uh, the librarian for geography along with Steve Kramer, who is the Bryan School librarian. And then we have Megan Carlton, who is our science librarian who joined us in January. Uh, she does bio, uh, chemistry, physics, astronomy, nanoscience. Um, I'm sure I'm miss missing some, but she is our science librarian. So we'll also are in the process of hiring a student success librarian who will help us connect to first year students, but we also have two first year student instruction librarians, Rachel uh, Olson and Maggie Murphy. So we are um, curriculum partners in ROI. Uh, so of course we're librarians and that we know a lot about research and help with research, but we also um, uh, are teachers and designers. So we're trained in the research process, um, but we also are trained in something called the ACRL Framework for Information Literacy, uh, which has frames that are authority is constructed and contextual, information creation as a process, information has value, research as inquiry, scholarship as conversation, and searching as strategic exploration. 
So those are the six frames. So we try to um, integrate these frames within our teaching, uh, but also based on your syllabus and your assignment. So we try to find your learning objectives, look at your syllabus and your assignments, and we cater our face-to-face um, -face and online instruction and tutorials to that. Um, so we're not just making stuff that we think is important, we're making stuff that in, you know, resonates with your students and is important for your students. Uh, so we're also designers. As the online learning librarian, I run trainings for all of our um, liaison librarians on instructional technology, and I work with units across campus. I'm um, heavily ingrained with the instructional technology consultants. Um, so many of our liaisons create their own objects, that, um, and we try to follow accessibility guidelines, instructional design practices. Um, we work, uh, again, like I said, with all online learning departments to kind of cater our stuff and make sure it fits within um, our platforms like Canvas and beyond. So we're really into something called Universal Design for Learning or UDL here in the library. Um, Rob Owens did a great session on this at, uh, I think, the last one we did in March. So. Is something called research guides. You might also hear them be called lib guides. Uh, that's what they're called. That we run them through a company called Spring Share Lib Guides. Um, but they are on a variety of topics. So this is the research guides by subject. So every department has a um, guide, right? So depending on where you're coming from, you have a guide to get you started. So I'll show you, to be fair, one of my guides. So um, let's look at kinesiology. So this is a guide I've made for the overall major of kinesiology, uh, where you can see a lot of these guides are divided into finding articles, sometimes it's called finding resources, uh, finding books, other online library resources, websites uh, that are important to kinesiology that deal with research, and then APA and AMA style are the two citation styles that my departments were used the most. So you can see here that this is the overall guide um, on kinesiology, so we have a lot of guides on health. Um, services such as finding data, um, SCUA and UNCG Athletics has a guide, that's our archives. Of course, we have one to surveys, questionnaires, and other research interests. So this just shows you that we don't just make guides on, um, you know, topics like kinesiology, we also have things on all these different research um, ideas, right, and stuff. So um, you can see here we also connect to course guides. So, you know, here's an example of a course that I work with, you know, one-on-one -on -one where I go in and work with the class. So you can see here this is different because it is connected to their assignment. Some of our guides even, um, I'm so connected to them that I create activities um, and tutorials based on their needs. So here's a course where I went in and did stuff um, where we really did a writing assignment. So um, I created research topics that you know were catered to them. They made a word cloud of um, keywords. We talked about these specific things. That we asked them questions about peer review, um, and then I made them some gifts about how to search for peer review within Sport Discuss. So again, all of us are different. Liaisons are going to have different um, styles and different ways of doing this. So um, for example. Um, I'll show you some other stuff in a little bit, but um, they have different things. Uh, every department has different guides. So we talked about this, but here's an example of another guide. Um, so Leah is our health science nursing librarian. So she does it a similar way, right? For her nursing, she has find the articles, books and eBooks, health statistics, other online sources, citing resources and tutorials. Again, notice all these guides that she has connected to courses. She has news from it. Notice on all these guides, you can chat with us, and we do have buttons that if you click on schedule appointment, it does connect to our Google Calendar library. Um, so you or your students can make an appointment with us. If Leah is online, it will say chat with Leah, and you will directly go to her or, you know, again, whoever's guide you're on. If you're not online, you'll go to um, a uh, other librarians who are, again, uh, very qualified to talk to you about the subjects. 
So here's an example again how things can look different. And this is our one of our first year instruction humanities librarian, um, Maggie Murphy, who created a guide for English 101, which of course many students at UNCG have to take this course. So we try to um, teach them about the research process overall. So her guide is different, right? Um, she divides it into picking and developing a topic, finding evidence, evaluating evidence, integrating and citing sources, and more resources. Her style is different, um, but again, it's very catered to her students. So again, we um, work with you on that. So we do have additional subject guides. So beyond um, department guides or course guides, you saw that on my kinesiology guide, I linked to data guide. Here's an example of how we have a whole guide on streaming media, maybe our e-resources librarian. So if you wanna go to this, uh, you um, let's just start at the library homepage. So you can go to library.uncg.com and you click on this research guides by subject. This gets you into all these subject departments. Notice some of them, like data is here, um, Grogan College, so some um, kind of overall things that we do link to are here. But if you click here on this additional research and resources guides, this is our additional stuff. So this is all stuff that are heavily used. We have one on citations, so this is a heavily used one um, where you can see we have all the different citation styles. We have one on Zotero, our um, you know, citation management tool. Um, notice that within these guides, we have our own tutorials that are catered to things. So we have an overall view of Zotero here, which is like two minutes long, see? So um, it's an animation kind of covering the overall. And then we have a 30 minute webinar on um, how to get set up in Zotero, how to download it, how to connect it to your account. So it's more detailed. So we try to put all different kinds of things on our guides. So notice here that that's just two. Um, we have it divided into citation, uh, library research, research, library resources and services, special collections and archives, and then general guides. So again, if you don't see something on here, uh, let us know. We're happy to make you one. Um, but we do use this as something that we use, uh, make for a lot of things. So for example, here's our ebook guide. We have a tutorial on here on how to find ebooks in our catalog um, with pictures and instructions and more. Okay, so that is our guide. So feel free to um, put any questions in chat as um, they come up. Um, so this is another example of um, a guide, an overall guide. So again, I mentioned that Joe is new. Uh, they are a new librarian here at UNCG where they are providing uh, GIS and data viz training. So she, they have a guide on GIS resources, including software and tools, training and tutorials, and finding data. So again, note that this is, um, we are always adding stuff about the research process, tools to do with the research process, um, and more. So, okay, we have something called PATH, Lighting Your Way from Research to Writing. Uh, so here is the link to it. You can also go to our library homepage and then under Services Library Tutorials, and it's called PATH. You just click on that. But this is our overall, like, getting started on research guide. So you can see here in the menu that we have stuff on um, getting started with research, question to keyword, types of sources, library catalog, finding articles, scholarly versus popular, finding websites, plagiarism, paraphrasing, and citing your sources. So there is a final quiz involved in this where they do, um, where it can email it to you. A lot of instructors, especially a first year students, will have their uh, students email the results to them um, in order to get credit for a grade and beyond. Um, so we are revamping this to make it a little bit more current. It just, it still works great. But you know, our catalog has changed. We have new librarians here. Um, we're gonna align it a little bit more to that ACRL information literacy framework that I was talking about. Uh, so stay tuned for things to get more updated uh, on this. But this is a great resource to use if you haven't used it already. So again, we list here all the stuff that you see. Um, and again, just remember to stay tuned. We're hoping to have at least some stuff to test in fall of 2019. Uh, where we will have, again, all this stuff and more. Um, and we have made a new, our information literacy coordinator, Jenny Dale, has made some new student learning objectives that are connected to find, evaluate, use, credit, um, and create. Okay, so we also have a tutorials guide where we try to collect all these different tutorials that we are using, whether they are videos, 
Google Slides, um, how-tos, and more. And we have them divided here um, on this guide, which I will drop into here. So the librarians use this to kind of as a repository of all the stuff we're using in terms of our online learning objects. You can see here in this getting started with research, we have a little um, interactive tutorial that you could send people through of a brief introduction on research. We have this peer review in three minutes, uh, which just quickly describes peer review. Notice that we use other stuff, um, you know, no need to recreate stuff that's already been made on how the research process works. But we also link to our own stuff, like here's a peer review infographic uh, that one of our librarians have made um, on kind of, you know, how the peer review process works. So um, you can see here, this is it. So we have um, scholarly and popular resources evaluation. We have a link here to like this getting started on, on these commonly used terms about sources. Um, notice here we have some health science getting started, Google getting started, graduate students getting started, primary and secondary resources, research as a process. You can also go into the database and resources page and it links you to this um, using the catalog. So it kind of gives you a step-by-step -step process of how to use our catalog and then different databases um, as well. So um, divided by topic. So here I'm, I do a lot of health science stuff. So you can see here we have one on like PubMed getting started. Um, we also have one on PubMed that's in Google Slides that goes over PQ, PICO and uh, using uh, getting started on how to use PubMed. So again, this is just an example. All the liaisons um, make their own stuff, so they're all different based on the liaison um, and you know whether they put their stuff on here or not. And um, then also citation management. And then we also make a lot of infographics, which we have them all kind of uh, embedded here. So um, if you're interested in these or want these put on any guides, you could let us know. A lot of times we link to these guides. Uh, from other guides and uh, use them to uh, talk about these different topics. Okay. So um, Joel asked, is the peer review set in Canvas? Um, we could put it in Canvas and that's actually the next section that we're going to talk about um, is Canvas. So um, we have a lot of stuff that we do in Canvas. We can go in as a librarian in your course, you can go into the People's tab and add us as a, a librarian. You just would put in our username and then change it over here to librarian. So that's how it works. So um, if you have, if you want your liaison in the course, they can go in and they could link to things, they could embed things, they could help you make sure that you're putting in the right kind of proxy link. Um, to make sure that our stuff, like um, either an article or a video or an ebook, is working off campus. Uh, and we could also, once we're in there, make announcements, participate in discussions, really whatever you want us to do. So um, that is uh, one thing. Uh, we also just recently added a library resources tab in Canvas. So you might have noticed this semester that we have this nice library resources tab. So depending on how the librarian that works with you uh, sets their guides up. It will either be this overall guide that can link you to your department. It can link to chat, it links to our catalog, and it links to our most used general databases. Um, so it's turned on automatically. If you want to turn it off, you can by just kind of turning it off on your navigation tab in Canvas. Um, but if you leave it on, your students can chat with us. They can use our stuff straight from here. They can find their course guide. Um, depending on your liaison, they might even have it set up that it goes directly to your department guide or to um, citation guide or, you know, guide they've made for your course. So um, another thing that we can do in Canvas is that um, there is something called Canvas Commons. So we have some stuff in there, you know, like something on plagiarism or more. You could add to Canvas Commons or we could make stuff for you and cater and add it to there. You can also search in Canvas Commons for OER materials. So there's tons of stuff in OER world, open education resources, uh, and a lot of that is in there, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a second. Um, we also have tons of stuff that works with Canvas. The big thing is you need to make sure it's permalinked or that we're going through the appropriate LTI. Again, this is not stuff that I expect everyone to learn, but if you have any questions, just email me and I can help you get it all set up. We also can create content for you. 
um, you know, cater to, again, your learning uh, objectives or an assignment. So here's an example of one of our librarians making a module for CSC 105, which are typically, you know, uh, first year or students kind of, you know, at the beginning of their careers, uh, research careers. And you can see the kind of stuff she has here, but if you wanted one more catered towards your stuff, we can make it for you directly within Canvas. Um, this is an example of a page in Canvas. Uh, we are all trained in Canvas. So um, I hope that kind of answered your question, Joel. Let me know if uh, you meant something else. So here's the guide. Um, this guide, uh, I'll drop it into chat for you. Um, but this kind of covers all the stuff we can do in Canvas if you want to learn more. Turn it over. Okay, and we talked about all this stuff. Um, and then the last thing is like I, what I mentioned is that um, open, OER is called Open Education Resources. And uh, it's a movement in terms of kind of pushing back against the money model of publishing and uh, say, you know, pushing for academia to make their stuff more freely available online. So it really goes off of this philosophy to make something truly open. You would be making it uh, the five R's. You would make it that it could be retained, it could be reused, it could be revised, it could be remixed, and it could be redistributed. So there is a movement within uh, the academia of people making OER or open um, textbooks and beyond. We do have an OER grant that we offer if you're willing to kind of let go of some textbooks or try to revamp your course in terms of making it less cost, co making it more cost effective for your students. Uh, so definitely let me know if you want more information on that. But this guide shows you more about OER for educators, what we can do. Um, it links us to stuff about open pedagogy. So like, you know, having your students even make some stuff for um, open uh, to contribute to this OER repository of stuff. Um, but in terms of Canvas, there is a, that, that Canvas Commons links to a lot of OER materials if you wanted to start there. We also link to this OER by subject. So if you're, you know, for example, if you're in anthropology, you could go here and go see what kind of stuff is available in terms of repositories, ebooks, um, lectures, tutorials, and more. So that is where OER fits in. So another thing to think about is scholarly communications. We do have a guide on that. So this is kind of, again, going beyond that kind of first year instruction, but we can help with author rights, copyright, open access, research, data management, and more. We have a guide here that kind of links to a lot of this stuff, and we can make tutorials on it, and we have. Um, for example, I just worked with a doctoral class where we went over scholarship metrics uh, using Scopus and thinking about Google Scholar and how their metrics work versus Scopus versus Web of Science. Um, again, if you're having a lot of questions about copper, copyright or your author rights when you're publishing, you can let us know. We do have an institutional repository here at UNCG called NC Docs, which you can contribute to. And then we also have an open access publishing fund um, so that we, you can, uh, if you're applying to open access journals or if you're interested in that, you can apply to get money because some of them cost money. So um, let us know if you have any questions about that, which again, we make tutorials about that and we contribute to that. So this was a lot, but it was short. Um, but uh, we covered some guides. So if there's uh, anything that I covered that you would like to know, didn't cover that you would like to know about, you can ask me. If we don't have it, we'd be happy to talk to you about making it. I can connect you to your liaison and we can talk about making it together. Um, we also work with a lot of different departments um, in terms of moving their stuff online, whether it's like you're trying to do a virtual event or you want more virtual tutorials. I could work with your ITC, but if it's related to research or the library, you're happy to work with us as well, and we can work with your ITC and make it and facilitate and make it happen. And that is it, right around 30 minutes. So, Joel, do you have any questions? You can um, ask me in the chat, or I can unmute you, whatever you prefer. Okay, great. Well, we are right at 1130. So I will um, share this, the slides with all these links 
in when I send out the video of this webinar. Um, and Joel, you said, can you can I send you a screenshot? Yeah, you can send me a screenshot. Would you want to send it to my email? Here it is. If you want to send me a screenshot. Um, I'm also happy to, like I said, I'll share the link to this with all the different things. Um, I'll send it right now over chat, but um, I'll also uh, send it when I do this. Are there any other questions? I'm kind of wrapping up. And Joel, do you know who your liaison is? So you said I did, but do you know who they are now? What department are you with? Okay, so Kate Hill is your um, liaison. So hopefully you've met with her. If not, um, I will send you that guide. Let me find it. through the chat right now. And this has uh, Kate's email address. You can um, email her, connect with her, ask her any questions. Uh, if you have any questions uh, to get started, I can definitely help you as well. Okay, well, I am going to end the webinar. Thank you for coming and I'll see you soon. Bye.